Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to combine and EQ impulse responses all from within your DAW. So I'm starting with a, a guitar amp simulator called Chameleon, which I developed. And on top of that, I have a impulse response loader called uh, Pulse. It uh, does everything that you need an impulse response player to do. And then I have uh, Re-EQ, which is a visual um, a graphical EQ plugin that comes with Reaper. So just to show you that this is what the plugin sounds like without um, any impulse response. Which sounds pretty good, um, but if we add an impulse response, it has that uh, cabinet uh, effect loaded on it. It sounds like it's playing out of a real amplifier. So the two uh, impulse responses that I have here, one is a Bogren a digital impulse response. It sounds really nice. And the other one is a Vox um, impulse that I just downloaded for free off the internet. So to show you what the different, uh, how the impulse response affects the sound, I will, um, I'll show you both of these. And I'm, I'll just be flipping the balance from the Bogren impulse response and the Vox. And this is, uh, and then in between they're being blended together. So you can see how the impulse response really affects the, uh, the EQ and um, really how the guitar, uh, really the guitar sound. It, it can really change it a lot. So say you're using an impulse response plugin and you find that you like two uh, individual impulses combined. So something like this. So now, now we're hearing qualities of both uh, impulse responses, but say you want to uh, combine that into a single impulse response that you can then load into any, any loader. Um, well, we can easily do that. Uh, impulse responses are just wave files, so anything you can um, do with with audio files within the DAW, you can do that to impulse responses. So, uh, what we're going to do is take those impulse responses and uh, just mix them together, and then you can also add EQ to those um, and get all those qualities in a single impulse response file. So, as you're mixing, um, you might find that you want to change the EQ uh, on your guitar sound after the impulse. So uh, I have this graphical EQ. Just to show you uh, some things you can do, you can, a lot of times you'll want to take out some of the bass sound so it fits into the mix better. And maybe you want to emphasize um, maybe the mid-range frequency or something like that. So I'll just leave it like this as an example, and then we're going to apply this to our combined impulse response, and then print that to a single impulse response with all of those qualities. All right, uh, I put my guitar up for now. We'll get it back in a minute. Um, but I also wanted to mention that in this EQ, I wanted to uh, save the work I did um, finding. I didn't do much, but um, when you're mixing something and you find that EQ that you like, um, you can save it as a preset, which I did so we can bring it back for applying it to our combined impulse response. So now I've opened a new project which just has uh, two blank tracks and I have my uh, impulse responses somewhere in this mess. Let's see, impulse responses. So these are the two, the Bogren digital impulse and the box and I'm just going to drag and drop each one into this track um, and they're very short uh, impulse responses you really have to zoom in um, to be able to see them most likely um, now when I this is really important when I bring these into Reaper it automatically puts this um, 
uh, this fade in at the beginning, you want to take that out because that's where the most important um, part of the impulse response is the very beginning. So I'm going to make sure and remove those. And you can do them at the end. It's not as important uh, as doing it at the beginning. So here are the two impulse responses as WAV files. Um, another thing you want to check for when combining is are they in phase, which uh, basically just look at the first two, the first peak, um, and make sure that they're mostly in line. If they are out of line, like if I slide this to the right, and this first peak is a uh, mismatch with the one on top, then you're going to get some uh, cancellation of uh, the audio and the impulse, and it's going to sound very flat. So I'm just going to leave this as is. I might be able to make that a little better, but let's just leave it like this for now. Okay, so to combine two impulse responses, all you have to do is sum them together. So I am going to uh, render these out to a single file, and that's it. Uh, the only thing is you need to make sure that um, the rendered file doesn't have any clipping. So I'm going to reduce the volume on both of these. Uh, there's probably a more scientific way to get exactly uh, half level on each of them, but I'm just reducing it in this track control. So now I'm going to go to File, Render, and it, it'll be a little bit different depending on your DAW, but again, this is uh, Reaper. It's what I usually use. So I'm going to render this uh, 44.1 mono wave, 32-bit floating point. You want to take out any extra data. There's no, no tail, no tempo information, uh, so you don't want that. Make sure it's mono, and uh, make sure you put it in the right spot. I'm going to put it in that same folder with the impulse responses. And I'm just going to call it IR combined. Okay. And render that. All right. And when you do that, it looks like it didn't clip at all. If it w did clip, there would be a, some red showing up. It actually says negative 1.9. So it was below that um, clipping line, which... Um, we're going to come back and normalize that in a minute. Okay. So now uh, I can get rid of these two, and I will bring in our combined impulse response, our combined, and again, get rid of that first fade in if your DAW puts that in there. Get rid of the second track. And this now has all the information from both impulse responses, um, about 50% contributing to the final sound for each, each impulse. And you can change that, um, that ratio. You can have more sound from one than the other, maybe change the volume to 25% and 75% if you want more um, balanced in, in one direction. Uh, okay, so what I want to do now is uh, normalize this, and I... I think I know where this is. Okay, so I want to normalize this track so that um, the peak is at one. And that's important so that the, uh, the impulse response isn't too quiet. Normalize. Normalized to zero dB, that'll that'll put it at one. You can see that um, the max volume it went up to the highest it can go without clipping. Okay, and that's our combined impulse response. Uh, and I'm going to re-render that since we uh, changed it. I'm just going to override our old one. All right. Um, so now we're going to add our EQ settings that we got from our, the other mix and apply it to this impulse response. And then we'll get that same uh, EQ out when we load this new IR uh, in our IR loader. So I'll just add the uh, re-EQ effect that you saw before. And uh, 
load our preset EQ example. So that's that's what we had before. And I'm going to make sure to apply it to our impulse response. It's on. And I'll just render that out to a new impulse response. IR combined. I just call that IR combined EQ. And render. And it actually shows negative 4.8 dB because of our EQ. It took some of the volume out of that. So um, off camera, I'm going to come back in and normalize that, the same thing we did before. All right, I've got my guitar back, and we are back in the um, session that we had before with the, uh, the amplifier, the impulse response loader, and the EQ. Um, and so now I'm going to compare our combined and EQ'd IR with the ones that's load that are loaded in this. All right, so um, before we had the the Bogren Digital and the Vox impulse response with the EQ, and that's what this sounds like. And that's uh, halfway balanced, so 50%, 50%. Now I'm going to um, take off the EQ, and I'm going to move the balance just to one IR, and I'm going to load our IR combined EQ. And this is, this is the file, the new file that was normalized to one, and see what that sounds like. And I'll move back to the original, and these should sound the same, because we applied uh, essentially the same processing to a single IR file. And um, because it's a WAV file, you can you can simply sum them together. All right, so this is uh, the Bogren Digital, the Vox uh, mixed in the plugin, and the EQ added. <laughs> take off the EQ. I'm going to uh, move it, the balance, just to the one IR, to our single printed IR, and it should sound exactly the same. it does maybe you guys can tell me if it doesn't but it sounds the same to my ears uh, and then just for completeness we will look at our simply combined uh, our combined impulse response without the EQ and we'll compare those so that our combined two is our uh, combined with the normalization applied and that is what this sounds like Without the EQ. And now we'll compare that to um, the two running through the plugin. So there you have it. You can combine two impulse responses and apply EQ so that it sits in your mix, all from within your DAW. No extra tools needed. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching.